Okay, welcome back to the Investigative Journal on this June 21st, 2016 day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony, and you're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. You can listen to my show every evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's on FirstAmendmentRadio.com Pacific Time. If you can't listen to the show then, they also replay the show at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And if you can't catch either of those two shows, please, please, please go to my website at A-R-C-T-I-C-B-E-A-C-O-N, ArcticBeacon.com. And remember, the truth starts here. And our show has been called The Alternative to the Alternative Media for Good Reason. Because the stories and the things we talk about here are prohibited in both the mainstream and most of the alternative, controlled alternative media on the internet. Last week we spent time uh, looking at uh, what America was preoccupied with all week and that was the shooting in Orlando and we presented it in a way where you could make up your own mind whether you believe it really happened, whether you think it was a false flag orchestrated by the uh, uh, people in power of, of your government who have a uh, agenda and these people actually died there or it uh, was a false flag hoax. Whatever it was, the whole week was uh, America was preoccupied with it, and I think for a reason they did this. But at the same time, the major story going on happens to be NATO's buildup, America, U.S. Built military buildup surrounding Russia right now, and this conflict with Putin. Uh, what is it leading to? Well, I believe it's leading to World War III. You know, everything's come in threes, don't they? Well, anyway, uh, there's no doubt that Putin has been uh, provoking the U.S. with uh, and NATO with his actions in the Ukraine, as well as what he's doing in Syria. In response, the U.S. and uh, NATO is building up a military presence surrounding Russia, in a sense, and uh, I find it to be very strange that our media is not covering it while they preoccupy themselves with what I consider to be a false flag hoax, uh, getting the American people's eye really off the ball. So what's this preoccupation, what's this buildup uh, with NATO right now? What is this, what is really going on with Putin? Now, people who aren't familiar with the Hegelian dialectic and believe uh, that Putin and America are really at odds with one another, have it all wrong. It may seem that way on the surface, and that's what they want you to believe, but if America and Russia were really at odds with each other as far, and China, why do they all agree upon allowing chemtrails to exist in their country? Well, at this particular juncture, Putin has put a ban on the Rothschild banking system to be in Russia, why would he agree to uh, having chemtrails all over the world with America? Why would they get into the Antarctic Treaty? And when you start looking at all those things, you realize they're playing you as a patsy. They're playing you to the hilt. And when they want to create this war, they will do it. Now, how they're doing it on the surface is presenting Putin now as this man who's fighting the New World Order. And when I play a couple of videos here, you will see what I mean. And this is how they're portraying it to you. But let me set the record straight in a matter of a minute. Putin and Obama and the leader of China all work on the same team at the top. Their role is to present it to you as if they're fighting for competing interests, to basically create chaos in a conflict. So when you listen to what I'm going to play, first I want to go back and give you an outline of how these three wars were planned years before, and that's World War One, World War Two, and World War Three. And many times on my show, I presented Albert Pike's uh, conversations with Giuseppe Mazzini back in the 1800s, outlining these three wars. Now, this document appeared in a British museum, historical museum, and when certain people, journalists, were beginning to bring this to the public eye. It was immediately taken out. And anyone that listens to what this first 10-minute uh, presentation about Albert Pike 
there will be people that say it never existed, it is a creation. Uh, that's up to you to decide. But there is no doubt that these wars were orchestrated when you start looking at the particulars regarding them. Always this uh, igniting like Pearl Harbor event. And the same thing is going on today. I believe Syria, Ukraine are powder keg moments in our history that could lead us into a huge, huge conflict. Now, before I get to this, let me mention that I've read a little bit about um, America's military buildup. They're putting their, uh, uh, you know, missile defense system up. And Russia has then come back, Putin has come back and said, that doesn't bother us. We can, we can uh, bypass that. We have a way of destroying America if we want. And they, they're talking about using EMP microwave uh, weapons, which would basically black, you know, black out America, take out the power grid, take out everything. And that would be the precursor to an invasion. Uh, interesting. Well, since America is still preoccupied now with uh, what's going on in Orlando and the whole ramifications of this, no one's talking about anything else. Let's look at a presentation that a gentleman did, and I'm trying to get his name here, but it's uh, called Albert Pike and the Three World Wars, sent to me by one of my listeners, the Masonic Agenda. Now listen to what he says about Pike, if you've forgotten about it. Much of this I've presented on my show in the past, but as I, as I say all the time, uh, a lot in radio goes in one ear and out the other, and it's best to repeat things a few times. So listen to the, who Pike really is, what this uh, uh, video presents, it's 10 minutes, uh, talking about this orchestration of these wars. After that, we will get into how certain people view what Putin's doing, and we'll go from there. So let's start out. Let me make sure I got everything right here. And here we go. Was one of the most colorful characters in American history. It is said that he was born on December 29th, 1809 in Boston. Was the eldest son. And later served as Brigadier General of the Confederate Army. After the Civil War. Pike was found guilty of treason and jailed, only to be pardoned by President Andrew Jackson on April 2, 1866, who met with him the next day at the White House. On June 20, 1867, Scottish Rite officials conferred upon Johnson a 32nd degree masonry, Freemasonry degrees. Pike was said to be a genius, able to read and write 16 languages. He was one of the founding fathers of the head of the ancient accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, being the Grand Commander of North America Freemasonry from 1859, and retained that position until his death in 1891. In 1869, he was the top leader of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Interesting. Pike was said to be a Satanist who indulged in the occult, and he apparently possessed a bracelet which he used to summon Lucifer, with whom he had constant communication. He was the Grand Master of a Luciferian group known as the Order of the Palladium, or of the Sovereign Council of Wisdom, it's also been called, which had been founded in Paris in 1737. Now, General Albert Pike was the only Confederate general with a statue on federal property in Washington, D.C. He was honored not as a commander or even as a lawyer, but as Southern Regional Leader of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. The statue stands on a pedestal near the foot of Capitol Hill between the Department of Labor building and the Municipal building between 3rd and 4th Streets on D Street Northwest. Now, I tell you all of this because it is said that he received a vision from his mentor, Mr. Lucifer, I guess, on August 15, 1871. And William Guy Carr, former intelligence officer in the Royal Canadian Navy, wrote a book called Satan, Prince of This World, in which he gives this information. He said 
that he received this information from a book written by Cardinal uh, Carl Rodriguez in Santiago, Chile, who wrote in 1925 a book called The Mystery of Freemasonry Unveiled. And in this book, in 1925, it is said that he wrote a letter to a man named Mazzini. Yeah, that's Giuseppe Mazzini, the Italian revolutionary leader. In which he described this dream. And in the dream, he predicted three world wars. The first world war, he said, must be brought about, and I'm quoting from Albert Pike. The first world war must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the czars in Russia and of making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the British and German empires will be used to foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. Now, students of history will know that Otto von Bismarck forged a certain alliances between 1871 and 1898, uh, which brought about this war, this World War I. And Otto von Bismarck here says that he was a co-conspirator with Albert Pike, and he was the one instrumental in bringing about the First World War. Well, that's the First World War. Then he dreams that there must be, he is given in this visionary dream, a second world war. Now remember, this was in 1925 that it became public in this book written by, uh, uh, by a cardinal uh, from Santiago, Chile, Rodriguez. He says, quote, the second world war must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and that the political Zionism must be, will be strong enough to institute the sovereign state of Israel in Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must become strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would then be re uh, restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. Well, there are some who may argue that the terms Nazism and Zionism were not known in 1871. Uh, you should remember, however, that the Illuminati invented both of these movements. In addition, communism as an ideology and as a coin phrase originates in France during the Revolution. In, eight, in 1785, Restif coined the phrase four years before the Revolution broke out. Restif and Bebouf uh, in turn, were influenced by Rosé, as was the most famous conspirator of them all, Adam Wiesant. Then he has this vision, in this vision, not only one world war and two world wars, but here comes the third world war. He says, and I quote, The third world war must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. Yeah, that's what he says. The war, this was 1925. Please understand that. Uh, at least 1925. It may go all the way back to 1871, as is purported to do, but at least it was written in a book and published in 1925. So he says that after World War I was just over a few years, and before World War II even started, he's now thinking about this Third World War, and it says that it will... Uh, be caused by the differences between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. That's what it says. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economic exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm in which, in all its horror, will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin and savagery, 
and of the most bloody turmoil. So he's against Christianity and he's against atheism. They're supposed to fight each other to the death, you see. Then, he says, everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and, and the multitude, disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will, from that moment, be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowledge where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer. That's what he says. Brought about finally in, uh, brought, uh, brought finally out in the public view. So he's saying that Lucifer will finally make himself, you know, the, the good guy. He's going to save the world from these atheists who don't believe in deity and from these Christians who believe in the good God. Well, so it says this manifestation will result in the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Well, I don't know if it's true, but I can tell you that it sure has played into what is being carried on in um, the Middle East today. And it looks like ev everything from World War I and World War II with the development of the State of Israel and with the Zionist movement and the communist movement and the atheist movement and the peppering down of persecution on the Christians of this world, it looks like that may be Lucifer's attempt at annihilation of us all um, so that Lucifer will appear in the form, of course, of what the Bible calls the Antichrist and establish peace on earth for mankind. <laughs> I got news for all those Illuminatists. I can tell you this, they're all going to be thrown into the lake of fire. So says the word of God, and I believe it from cover to cover. Okay, uh, <clears throat> in that video you heard the word Illuminati mentioned many times. When I hear that word, uh, I should explain it. I call it the Vatican-led Illuminati. You can't talk about them without including the Vatican in this whole uh, uh, discussion. Uh, let's look closer at Pike. I got about four minutes here and uh, see what uh, someone who said this, the stuff they don't want you to know. One is Albert Pike. Here we go. Here are the facts. General Albert Pike was born in December of 1809. He was exceptionally bright and allegedly accepted into Harvard, although he didn't have the money to attend. Today, Pike is remembered as a pioneer in the early courts of Arkansas, a Confederate officer during the Civil War, and a central figure in the development of Freemasonry. He's still the only Confederate officer with a statue in Washington, D.C. History is divided on Pike. He's been called a genius, a villain, and an occultist. But that's not all there is to this story. Some people believe Albert Pike was more than just a lawyer and a general. Much, much more. Here's where it gets crazy. Depending on who you ask, Albert Pike may have been the leader of the Ku Klux Klan, a Satan worshiper, or even the king of the Freemasons. In The Unseen Hand, A. Ralph Epperson argues that a great deal of historical events have been planned in advance. Epperson believed that Albert Pike was at the center of this conspiracy and the highest ranking Mason in the United States, or possibly the world. Pike is also accused of being a member of the Illuminati and a harbinger of a coming new world order. The stories about Pike's alleged occultism and villainy are both varied and, to a large degree, impossible to prove. For example, some claimed he had a magic bracelet that allowed him to commune with the devil. Others claimed that he helped found the Ku Klux Klan, or that President Andrew Johnson considered Pike his Masonic superior. Masonic databases deny the allegations about Pike and the Klan, but that hasn't stopped conspiracy theorists, especially anti-Masonic theorists, from making this claim. Anti-Masonists believe that Freemasons have destroyed most of the records proving Pike's involvement in sinister affairs. However, one claim takes attention over all the others. 
In 1871, Pike allegedly sent a letter to an Italian political activist named Giuseppe Mazzini, in which he describes a curious dream about three world wars. In this letter, Pike apparently outlines specific events leading up to World Wars I and II. Additionally, Pike pushed for the organization of communism, Nazism, Zionism, and other international movements as tools to escalate these conflicts. According to this letter, the Illuminati will provoke a third world war by creating religious conflicts in the Middle East. After this war is ended, the letter claims that nihilist and atheist will create bloody turmoil, leading the world's disillusioned masses to follow Lucifer. For those who believe this conspiracy theory, Pike's letter accurately predicts the course of world events. However, there are several problems with this letter, and the vast majority of historians believe it's a hoax. Why? First, there's the use of anachronistic terms like Nazi, an abbreviation of National Socialist Party, which wasn't coined until decades later. Secondly, a notorious French prankster known as Leo Taxel confessed to the hoax, claiming that he had penned this letter himself. Third, claims about the letter have expanded over time, including the addition of new material or misquotations of the original letter. Fourth, Albert Pike was a lifelong proponent of states' rights or small government. It seems odd that someone so against federal power would work to make a one-world government. Yet conspiracy theorists such as Edith Starr Miller and William Guy Carr believe the hoax claims are simply an attempt to bury the truth. For those who believe this letter is genuine, the claims of skeptics and historians are only further evidence that there's something they don't want you to know about Albert Pike. Okay, I just wanted to uh, present that to you to give you a well-rounded look at this. So we have some people saying the letter to Mazzini was a hoax. Others say no, it was a cover-up. As usual, when you're dealing with these secret societies, it's tough to prove them. Uh tough to prove a lot of things because that's why they call them secret so uh, I just look at how things are playing out and what's going on today regarding the possibility of a third world war very quickly and um, just off the top of my head I remember reading through the Bible and stating when the final conflict occurs it will come from a king of the north and the opponent will be a king of the south and I think that lines up perfectly with Obama and Putin. So there's much, much more in prophecy regarding the final conflict. And I said this to a friend the other day. I said, uh, to those who listen to this show and do not believe uh, in the Word of God and the Bible, remember that the Vatican-led New World Order loves to copy it. They love to do things uh, in that manner. So think of it in those terms. For those uh, who believe in the Word of God, there's much, much more in there regarding this final conflict. So uh, do your homework, do your reading, and you'll see how it all may play out in a very short period of time. Uh, I'm going to come back. And we're going to listen to somebody's interpretation of what's going on in Russia and what Putin is up to. And I will preface it with a few statements of my own. So uh, why don't we take a short break here on the Investigative Journal and return with uh, what's going on on the borders of Russia and why America is being preoccupied with presidential elections coming up and also uh, this Orlando shooting back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, 
The rapture will be canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Cancelled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven-year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast and the truth about God's chosen people and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. Okay, we are back for the second half hour of the investigative journal, and as I promised, I wanted to play this presentation. It's called War on the New World Order, Putin Bans Criminal Rothschilds from Russia. And I want to preface this uh, video by stating the person that's giving the information out uh, does not understand that Putin actually is a part of the New World Order, and it is his, it is his role to play act this scenario to seem that he's opposed to them. And why would I say that? Because that's how they operate in the Hegelian dialectic. Putin has made many, many, many visits to the Vatican. And also, that's not mentioned much in this presentation. And I have to add, there's a lot of holes in really understanding what's going on. So you can maybe understand, you know, look at what Putin's doing, how they're selling it to the masses this way, what NATO is doing. But remember that they all work together in the end, and they're just playing a part, just like our presidential candidates are playing a role right now. And really, Trump or Clinton both work for the Vatican. Here we go. Let's uh, listen to what... Uh, this presentation says about Putin. President Putin of Russia bans Rothschilds. What did I just say? I said that Putin bans Rothschilds from Russia. Finally, someone is standing up to the New World Order and Illuminati. Putin played the New World Order game long enough to climb as high as the position of president, then he abruptly turned his back on them prompting Jacob Rothschild to accuse him of being a traitor to the New World Order. Brave Vladimir Putin has banned Jacob Rothschild and his New World Order banking cartel family from entering Russian territory under any circumstances. Putin recently reminded his cabinet that he paid off the Rothschild's debt and grabbed them by the scruff of the neck and kicked them out Russia's back door. 
This meeting featured the president pounding his fist on the table and vowing to destroy the new world order, and according to a Kremlin source Putin is making great strides towards this goal. They do not own the world, and they do not have carte blanche to do whatever they want. If we do not challenge them there will be other issues. We will not be bullied by them. It is understood that the Rothschild banking racket was a noose tied around the neck of the Russian economy. Once the knot was tightened, the economy would struggle and choke. Early in his presidency he made a priority of uniting Russia socially, spiritually, and economically. He ordered the arrest of the Rothschild-backed oligarch Mikhail Khodorkovsky who had made Rothschild, Henry Kissinger, and Arthur Hartman directors of the Open Russia Foundation. He was so upset with the banksters in his temple, he tipped over their tables and drove them out with a whip. A keen student of history, well versed in world affairs, the Russian president has studied the history of the world's most elusive organization and understands the central role their financial collaborators have played in fomenting the major international conflicts of the 20th century. Now they want to plunge us into World War III. The New World Order's invasive roots and branches keep spreading around the world, but President Putin has stopped them expanding into Russia. This is a major blow to their plans for world domination and now they view him as a real threat. He's got them running scared, which is why he is degraded in the Western media at every opportunity. The reality is that Putin is leading us towards a multipolar world, far from the one government, one religion future plotted by the New World Order. When he took his forces into Syria to protect a sovereign state he further enhanced his reputation as a powerful leader. People around the world have started to wake up and notice. Here are 10 dark secrets from the wealthiest family in world history the Rothschilds. Live in a time where the world's most recognizable people are celebrities. Thanks to the media these are the people plastered on every television, movie, and magazine cover. Being a banker is difficult due the public's overwhelming negative attitude towards banking but even more so with celebrities who are constantly being exposed to the public. Before the media got into full swing with celebrity exposure, there was one family that was still recognizable, the Rothschild family. A lot can be said for the Rothschild family, they had an impossible amount of money and power across the world, and were influential in how some of the most important moments in the last two centuries played out. For today's society, it's hard to know too much about the Rothschild family since they are so secretive, and that they don't appear to have the same influence over world affairs as they once did after a spread of wealth. Heck, some people still think that they are lizard people of the New World Order that are using us all as puppets, and flying black helicopters over our houses. Basically, people just know that the Rothschilds were the world's richest people, and based out of Europe. There are some interesting facts about the family that you should know about as well. They include everything from secret societies, wars, incest, and just about everything else you would expect from a dysfunctional family, not a wealthy one. Here are 10 dark secrets from the wealthiest family in world history, the Rothschild. Number 10 There is a long line of incest. When your family has a lot more money than people know what to do with, and just as much power, it can be tempting to not want to have that compromised by outside families marrying their way in. The way that the Rothschild family kept out some of the people that were only after their money, was by marrying each other. As weird as it sounds, it was at least a good financial strategy. The entire incestual movement was spearheaded by the founder of the family, Mayor Emschel Rothschild. He set the whole line up so that the female members of the Rothschild family were very limited in their marriage options when it came to getting their inheritance. The only way to make absolutely sure that they would be getting money in the future was by marrying their cousins. Number 9 Some were very power hungry. Money can be the root of all evil, and it can also make someone a bit power hungry if they aren't careful. A lot of the members of the Rothschild family were thought to have a huge interest on the power of their country, 
and considered themselves to be even above the laws and lawmakers. Amshel Rothschild is claimed to have once said, Give me control of the economics of a country, and I care not who makes her laws. What that essentially boils down to, is that they believed that they could set their own rules as long as they had enough money. And as you could probably tell, a lot of them did have enough money to set themselves above kings, queens, presidents, prime ministers, and whatever type of ruler each country had. It was an impressive collection of power that the Rothschild owned. Number 8 They dictated the price of gold. Some would argue that the price of gold is still to this day being decided by the Rothschild family. In 2004, Nathan Mayer Rothschild and Sons pulled out of the gold business, and any other precious metals, giving up their spot to Barclays. The Rothschild family having a say in the price of gold started back in 1919, when the five leading traders of the industry met twice a day to set the price. This gave the Rothschild family and their colleagues a lot of power over the people that held onto gold as their most valuable asset, and a lot of people are still doing it today. For that long span between 1919 and 2004, the meetings were held each day at the N.M. Rothschild and Sons offices. There have been several allegations of corruption in the time that they were still fixing the price, and after it. Number 7 in the U.S. Federal Reserve The Federal Reserve System is a bank that is privately owned, and is where the United States keeps most of its money. One of the major U.S. Federal Reserve banks is located in New York City, and is owned by those outside of the country. It is widely believed that both the Rothschild family, and Rockefeller family both had a major say in the U.S. Federal Reserve. Now, the extent of their interest in the Federal Reserve has been massively debated. Some claim that there was no interest at all, but others believe that the Rothschild family had just as much power in America as they did in many of the European countries, and that owning all of the major banks was a secret that the Rothschild family could keep. The full amount of American money was never disclosed. Number 6 Many are believed to be Satanists. Here is another secret that will be debated until the end of time. Many of the witnesses that entered their home claim that the Rothschild family were filled with Satan worshippers. According to these same witnesses, the Rothschild family would set a spot at the table for the Dark Lord himself, and that nobody was allowed to sit in it. This one has been hard to confirm, but the reports have been numerous. To add a little more intrigue to the situation, some of the family members would sign their name on documents with the seal of Solomon. Although the seal is mainly regarded as a symbol of the Jewish people, it was not the official symbol at the time. Instead it was seen as a largely unused symbol that was used only by magicians, and Satanists in previous years. That is another debate that will still rage on. Number 5 They had ties to secret societies. You have heard many conspiracy theorists talk about secret societies like the Illuminati and the Freemasons, but most of that talk started with the Rothschild family. Either they are completely embracing the rumors and cracking fun at the situation, or they truly do have some interest in the secret underworld and its finances. Because there are those that will always try to expose the members in the supposed Illuminati, there are a lot of clues that were uncovered. One interesting clue that might suggest that the Rothschild family really is invested into secret societies, is stemming from World War I. Since the Rothschild family was present for the treaty that was signed at the end, people reported that a part of the treaty included them taking over the Bavarian Illuminati that was founded in 1776. Since the society is secret, you may never find out the details. Number 4 They have bankrolled many major wars. Since the Rothschild family controlled reportedly half of the money in the world, they were the ones that were able to fund most of the major wars that have happened over the past 200 or so years. The Rothschild family has funded everything from the Napoleonic Wars to the World Wars of the 20th century. By loaning money to governments instead of individuals, 
it has been able to make them the most powerful family in the history of the world. At the end of each war, the Rothschild family started to see dollar signs when the loans started coming back, and more money was needed by other countries for their rebuilding efforts. When the banks were all decimated because of the war, there was only one place to turn, and that was the Rothschild. Perhaps this is why they considered themselves to be above the law in most countries. Number three they had very strange parties. One thing that doesn't help the Illuminati rumors in the slightest, are the odd parties that the Rothschild family has held. The most notable, and telling, one that there are photographs from was back in 1972. Just to get it started, the invitations were sent in reverse so that you needed a mirror to see what was written on the invitation, and when you arrived at the building the lights out front were completely red. A lot of these parties involved some very odd choices in style that included, wearing animal style heads, and masks with multiple faces. The photos of the party seemed like it was something straight out of a Lady Gaga video, if that gives you any clue on how weird it really was. They also had a strange fascination with bird cages, but that's perhaps because Salvador Dali was a family friend. Number two they could be hiding up to 650 billion dollars. The Rothschild family is, without a doubt, the richest family in the history of the world. It is strange to not see any of their names listed on Forbes each year in terms of the richest individuals, but as a family, they are still rich. The family has claimed that through assets they have a net worth estimated to be at about $350 billion. The reason for this being that spreading the bloodline away from incest has caused some diluting in the assets. However, there are many that still estimate that the Rothschild family is still the world's leader with over $1 trillion in net worth. That's because for some, it is hard to believe that a family who has someone that is worth $4 billion, Jacob Rothschild, and $20 billion, Sir Evelyn de Rothschild, can only be worth that $350 billion when all of them are added up. Number 1 Nathan Rothschild cheated his way to owning England's finances. Perhaps something that nobody would be able to get away with now. Nathan Rothschild essentially owned all of England's finances after the Battle of Waterloo. Since he had connections, Nathan was able to get word before anybody else that the Battle of Waterloo was not a lost cause. Everyone else, on the other hand, considered it to be a loss that would devastate the country. From there it's believed that Nathan went directly to the London Stock Exchange, and sold all of his bonds in the British government. When seen doing so, everyone else in the building did the same thing, causing the price to drop to almost nothing. When the prices were at a new low, Nathan bought back all of his bonds, as well as everyone else that sold theirs in a way of getting even more power. Please share this video, get the word out. They are the 1%, we are the 99%. Okay, the one thing I wanted to mention that they didn't in that presentation is that the uh, Rothschilds are the bankers of the Vatican. So who's really the boss? It's usually the customer, not the banker. And when you start looking at the Vatican tentacles related with this organ with the Rothschilds, that is very, very interesting. But let's uh, get some updated news from Israeli news on what's going on in both Russia and North Korea. Arab Tel Khavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, a quick take of our broadcast. I need to bring you guys up to date on some very serious breaking news going on. Uh, Sputnik News is reporting that the, um, that the United States is planning a preemptive strike in August to degrade its nuclear capabilities. All the while, the uh, Pyongyang has now moved nuclear capability uh, missiles to its eastern border. Now, as a, as a report comes from Russia thus far, it is short range, which would put, uh, no doubt, the United States Navy and Japan at uh, arm's reach for uh, this particular uh, country. But we've also reported recently in Russian news 
that the United States is also possibly planning a preemptive strike as early as August this summer. Russians are reporting it on the Russian Federation, uh, not to mention the, the talks right now between Russia and uh, the United States are very much on edge. Uh, there are some very serious things going on there. Uh, I've been asked to look into some other evidence that Russia may have already actually done an, uh, an advance into Ukraine. As of yet, I have not been able to confirm that, but I have found in Ukrainian news, uh, and we're trying to get sources on the ground to confirm more of these things, but Ukrainian news has already been worried that Russia may actually do an invasion of the Ukrainian country there. There is police that that may have already have started. As of yet, we have not, I repeat, we have not been able to confirm any of this information here. But there has been in Ukrainian sources that Russia has had a huge buildup of tanks and other heavy equipment on the Ukraine border there with the anticipation that Russia may actually go into Ukraine. We will be updating you on these things as we get more information, talking to some of our Russian contacts as well as our contacts in Ukraine. Okay, here's another report. I'm Stephen Benung. You're watching Israeli News Live. Just a quick take here of the broadcast this morning, trying to bring you up to date on some very serious issues in a war of words between the United States and Russia. Uh, the United States is saying that their patience are growing thin with Russia with the broken ceasefires uh, from the uh, Assad uh, government there in the country. Uh, and yet Russia is saying that the United States to date has never identified a list of those organizations that they consider uh, to be safe organizations in the country. Uh, it kind of puts uh, Russia at odds there trying to defend Bashar al-Assad and keep him in power when the United States gets angry if they bomb uh, an ISIS group there that the U.S. is backing. Uh, unfortunately, though, they're both speaking about their patients are running thin. RT News actually published an article this morning that said that, uh, that even Russia said if they think their patience is growing thin, ours is wanting, uh, wanting uh, compl completely. Uh, it is only going to uh, escalate into a major conflict if something doesn't happen very soon in this region here. Uh, we will be looking at this a little bit more in depth as well. Russia has test fired successfully uh, anti-ballistic missile uh, defense system, uh, a new one that they have just developed there as well. It seems that Russia is preparing for a major confrontation and as we brought out to you not too long ago that the Russians there in their own news media expect that the United States and their allies may do a preemptive strike on Russia this summer. Uh, that was a very uh, disturbing article that we read, and they said it could either be that or they're going to take and pull Russia's ability with the SWIFT code there so they cannot financially deal with anyone else in the world uh, except for themselves and possibly China. Uh, we'll have to just see how this works out. You know, there's a monopoly by the U.S., and of course the Vatican is behind that monopoly. As we saw that Pope Francis said recently, in the, uh, the video he made to Kenneth Copeland, everyone has their, their currency of their nations, he even likens it to their religions. But as he stated also, he said Joseph's brothers could not eat their money. So I would imagine that's a, a subliminal threat, you might say, to the world there, that you can't eat your currency uh, when the time comes and they want to bring about a one world currency. I would watch that very closely and uh, anyway, we'll be, we'll be looking at more of these things later this evening on Israeli News Live. Stay tuned with us there tonight as we bring this to you, as well as live stream. We'll be covering it on live stream, Israeli News uh, Live on live stream. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live. Shalom. Okay, there you have it. Uh, interesting stuff. Uh, Israeli News, uh, they cover this stuff from Israel, and they bring it to us in English. And there's a lot going on there that uh, our news... Uh, Cast don't talk about it all and could it be a cover what happened in Orlando and as well as you know the the networks are just streaming every day uh, the presidential elections and there's very little uh, talking about this buildup of NATO forces 
uh, about Russia's reaction, about these preemptive strikes that they're talking about. And to me, that's the story that has to be watched very, very closely, as he said. Uh, and what we'll do is um, look for more. Uh, go to go to that uh, broadcast, uh, Israeli News. You get a lot of stuff there. His name is Stephen Ben Nun from IsraeliNewsLive.com, and you get a lot of stuff from him uh, regarding what's going on in the Middle East. Also, I recommend go to uh, Barry Chamish. He does a show on this radio station, and he gives you some inside stuff that we can't get here regarding Israel. He's a former Israeli journalist that's gone into exile. And uh, a number of years ago, well, he's been on my show many, many times in the past. So, yeah, check out what Barry has to say about all this. And he gives you a good insight on the Vatican's control, as well as what Stephen here mentioned uh, regarding Pope Francis's real intentions. And so if you don't consider the Pope to be a heavy-duty player in this, then you really need to um, really do your homework. Because I assure you, the Vatican is behind a lot of what's going on, most of what's going on in the world. And we tried to outline that so you get the full story. And that's why we here are called the alternative to the alternative uh, news, because we're not afraid to talk about the Vatican and so many others on the Internet cover it up for them, meaning they work for them. And you see that in the mainstream as well. That's why we have nothing more than a state-controlled media. Anyway, we'll uh, come back tomorrow with more. Uh, and uh, hopefully keep an eye on what's going on over there in the Ukraine as well as uh, what's going on in Syria. Could they be the powder keg to lead us into a third world war very soon? We'll be back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment rights media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening.